finally have gotten this computer built. Let me introduce you to Project Vortex. It's only taken me six months. <laughs> well, let's get it wrapped up. So here's what we have to finish up today. I have been um, doing the system prep. I have been using Primo Chill's Sys Prep uh, to run through the loop and get everything cleaned out. Um, I did flush the radiators initially just using through the pump and then I put them all together and did this. So they should be nice and clean and ready to go. So I need to drain the system prep and we're gonna fill it with EK Cryofuels um, Mystic Fog. This is supposed to be a pretty cool looking uh, LED light activated foggish looking fluid. So I kind of figured it would look really nice with how this, uh, with what I'm trying to accomplish with this build. Obviously this is really a black build for the most part with some chrome in it. So the idea is hopefully it's simple, yet elegant, yet a little flashy, I guess, if we can call it that. Obviously me using the um, Trident Z Royal RGB kit for the RAM is gonna add a little bit of bling to it. Hopefully it's not too much that is. Um, the only thing I was kind of, I don't want to say concerned about, but I was a little nervous that it may be out of place, but I think it should work out really well. Uh, I spent a lot of time making sure that these bends were right on. I didn't want to use any additional fittings this time around. I wanted to just do everything as clean and simple and straight as possible. So I did really take my time on these bends. Um, Before I get this filled up, however, I want to talk about what I used uh, to do this. I don't, probably everybody's waiting to just get into the final build. We'll get there in a moment. I really want to show you what some of the tools I use to make these cuts very clean, the bends simple, and kind of just show you how uh, I do my um, PTG bending and setup. So I'm going to grab that stuff and we'll be right back here. First thing I want to talk about when it comes to the, and this is not an inter tutorial, just some simple advice of how I did these uh, and why I took my time. Um, when it comes to bending PTG or really anything, is measure twice, cut once, right? That's the old adage. I really took my time in measuring and what I use for measuring is, first off, I bought the Monsoon Mandrel Kit for the half inch PETG, which comes with the mandrels, or the little blue ones so you can bend it, you know, 45 and 90 degree angles and even circles. And along with it comes um, this ruler kit. And it does inches and millimeters. I, this one I get, well actually, I take it back. It comes in millimeters, centimeters and it comes with 90 degree angle. So the idea is I can make my bend however I want to make my bend, right? So I can measure it out and it will be precise. Now, keep in mind when you are measuring, there is a depth that the PET tube, PETG tube does go inside of the fitting. So don't forget about that because you don't want to just measure edge of the fitting to edge of the fitting because you'll be short. So make sure you give yourself a little extra distance there and something like this really helps. I know there are some people out there, I think Jay's Two Cents is a good example of this. He eyeballs everything. I don't know how, because I watch his stuff and it looks pretty dang amazing, especially for eyeball. I mean, heck, it probably looks even better than mine does, and he eyeballs it. Mine's a precise measurement. I can't do that. So that's why I measure this out the way I do. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna get into the, the heat gun and all that stuff. Also, um, obviously, once you get your measurements and you know how you wanna bend it, you gotta cut your PET juke. PETG tube. There are several ways. I've got uh, the crimps or the cutters that supposedly will work. I've not really had the best luck on it. Depending upon the type of PETG that you're using, um, example, Alpha Cool, they tend to break, it cracks. I don't know the difference why it's so much more brittle than, say, the Primo Chill stuff is. Specifically, I use the Primo Chill uh, half inch outer diameter um, for this. I think it's three eighths inch inner diameter. I'd have to check, but you bend it. I use this to cut it. Um, this is actually, uh, and I will put a link to it in the description, a just a little handsaw, uh, or not a handsaw, but a little drill saw here. And so this is actually a little bench top cutoff saw. And you can see it, I mean, it spins pretty good. It cuts to a half an inch depth, so 
for what I use it for, and I'll get a close up of all this stuff here in a second. As long as you go slow and steady, this thing will give you a nice clean cut. It's quick. Uh, I found this, and it's really cheap. It was like, I don't know, 30 bucks or whatever it was. Uh, this gives you a real precise, clean, straight cut that I then come and I use this Primo Chill finishing bit. And this thing allows me to put it right into the tube and you can finish it off and with um, this and it edges off, cleans off the um, end of the PETG tube so that once you remove the burrs and stuff, so when you use that, you're not gonna end up slicing up the O-rings inside of the fittings because of an extra burr or something. And it gives it a nice, clean, professional looking finish. So that's something I've really liked. Uh, and I've used that on my last several builds as opposed to just that simple deburr and sandpaper and all that stuff. Uh, this is quicker, cleaner. And another, another nice thing is with it, is let's say you've got, you do have it just a little bit too long. You can actually trim it down with this as opposed to uh, cutting it again, because you can just go down a little bit at a time and it keeps that nice clean edge for you. So those are the tools that I use to clean up and do my build, if you will. Okay, another thing I wanna talk about that's really important is when you're planning your loop, obviously you wanna have a fill point, which I have right up here. And I actually have my air exhaust fittings that I'm gonna get on here as well, which is gonna be really uh, useful in the long run. But you wanna also make sure that you have a drain point. I have done builds where, like I do the whole thing, I'm all excited, it's done, and then I realize, oh crap, I don't have a drain port. So then you're trying to be careful about, oh, okay, you gotta tilt it and all this kind of stuff to make sure that the air is up and that you don't just drain the heck out of it. So I always make sure that I incorporate a drain port of some sort. Now this is the first time I have used uh, the barrel one. Uh, so this is actually a slide release valve. So I'll pull it um, and it will release fluid into my bowl here. So you always wanna make sure you're prepared for all of this. And then, um, which will then allow me to get this all out and then I can go ahead and fill it up with the good stuff. So let's get this done. I'm talking about the pressure release valve. I like to use either the one where you have to manually press the top and it releases the air for you, or this is an um, automatic air exhaust valve. So I'm gonna put this right at the top of my loop up here because I had to order it, I didn't have it yet. Obviously you don't need it, but I do like it because then it'll actually let all of the air escape appropriately. Then you can fill it to the top with fluid, so you have a full system of fluid in here. It's just you know one of those things that I'm kind of you know retentive about, but these things are awesome. Um, I've done them in my last couple of builds as well, and they're just I find that in the end all the air gets out, and it really helps create a, create a nice balanced um, fluid level throughout. So let's get this all finished up. running and it posted so that's fantastic um i got a little flashy flashing going on at the back here i'm not really sure what that is yet i'm gonna get the windows software installed um 
and make sure there's nothing weird going on. I'm hoping I don't have bad fans. That would really suck. But it's just the back three that are doing this flashy, flashy thing. And I'm not really sure if it's a, again, if it's some sort of a setting in the fan that it thinks it needs to do that or, or what. Uh, other than that, it's definitely moving air. <laughs> uh, probably can't really hear it, but I mean, I can definitely feel it. Uh, I like how it looks overall. I'm um, a little confused with the Mystic Fog. Uh, it definitely looks foggy. According to the description, this is supposed to be, uh, it says EK Crowfield Mystify, Mystic Fog is a unique semi-transparent coolant based on a new formula with long lasting stability and vivid addressable DRGB reactivity. This coolant is specifically, uh, or I'm sorry, especially developed to bring the best light dispersion capabilities with various PC liquid cooling products. It contains every Thing a high-end liquid cooling system requires for efficient thermal performance and providing the necessary protection for your water blocks. So, sounds fancy. Um, what they showed online is that it would have a little bit more of the colors transmitted through it from the lighting. And unfortunately, I'm not seeing that at the moment. Maybe it's more of a darker environment thing, which I can't uh, simulate at this moment. Uh, maybe, I, I don't really know. I've, I can't say at this point that I'm really impressed with the look of it. I might go back to clear fluid, just distill water with some uh, PT nuke in it or something, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I, gotta, I suppose I'll give it a try first before I completely just abolish it. Um, overall though, I'm, I'm very pleased and, uh, and impressed with how everything looks at this point. Now, let's get in here and I'll show you what the BIOS looks like. <clears throat> All right, first off, it does recognize the fact that I've got 32 gigs of RAM installed in here. I did switch the kit from the uh, 30, 64 gig kit because I'm gonna put that back into Genesis. And for Vortex, I'm gonna use a 32 gig kit. Uh, this kit happens to be a 3600 speed, 16 uh, cast system, or um, uh, kit, I should say, speed kit, whatever, brain shot. And it is recognizing this since I do have the XMP profile set. So that is awesome. Uh, temperatures look good for just an idle at the moment, not really have anything going on. Does show the CPU frequency right here. Uh, I haven't played around with any of the optimized system or the system settings, advanced settings or anything. So to do so, you just hit F2 and that brings you into your advanced settings. I'll go through this and set this up at some point and, and uh, just kind of play around. I want to use this for my um, I want to use this for my editing rig, but uh, I think this would be pretty cool. Now I do have everything daisy changed or daisy chained with the uh, in one fans. The whole reason I did this so I could have one set of fan speeds set up throughout and control them on one header, and I did that purposefully. Uh, and then obviously it's also reading my pump it right now as well, and I'll be able to play around with that and get those all set up. So now that this is finally done, I can put this thing to rest, get Windows installed, and hopefully move on to the next project. Now, what do I have coming up? Well, I did get in uh, the Alpha Cool water block for my 3090 for the Win 3. I also got in the EK water blocks for the uh, same card for the, for the Win 3 3090. And I am going to get those installed. We're gonna do a couple things. We are gonna see what kind of performance difference we can get and temperature difference we get from going from air compared to the Alpha Cool one and compared to the EK water block. And then we're gonna compare the two water blocks to see if either gets better performance than the other one. I would suspect that one would, the rumor has it that the EK one will function um, and pull the heat off a little bit better, but we'll see on that, I, I don't really know. Uh, it's just purely speculation and everything I've read online so far. I'm excited to do that. And I'll show you how to do those installs as well. Anyway, now that this rig is finally done, I can put it behind me and not keep saying, oh, it's gonna get done. Oh, it's gonna get done next week. Oh, it's gonna get done the following week. Thank God it's finally done. And I'm happy, I think. We'll see once I get everything solved. Okay, correction. Here is where the problem lied. Um, apparently these fans, when powered off of the motherboard, at least with the X570 AOS Extreme, uh, it doesn't provide enough power to power all of the fans. The interesting thing is, even if I put them in chains of, say, four and five, because I've got nine fans total on here, um, even off of the two digital RGB headers, it still doesn't provide enough power. So the only way I was able to get it to work was by actually using the Commander Pro that comes with the motherboard, 
Um, and now everything works great when it's on. Now, when it's off, there still, still seems to be some sort of a problem. Or even at the boot up, it, everything flickers and stuff. But that's fine. I only care about when it's running and I want things to run right. But so right now, I really like how everything has turned out. I mean, it looks awesome. Uh, and it is a very smooth running machine. It definitely um, is a noticeable difference uh, for, I guess, rendering and whatnot due to the <laughs> massive amount of threads in this 3950 uh, 3950X. It's no sex. That's later. Leave that one alone. Anyway, um, I do want to get a 5950X. Yes, I know. But at, at this point, that's just a simple swap out. Not a big deal. That doesn't take time for tube bending and everything. But I wanted to at least point it out now that it is all finished up because it was driving me nuts, not figuring out or knowing, one, what the problem was, and then two, showing a non-finished product that really isn't functioning the way it should. So now it is. So I think it's amazing. Um, I haven't decided on the color scheme I want to go with yet. I've noticed that with the different colors, the Mystic Fog is growing on me now after using this for about a week. Uh, especially at night, it really does illuminate pretty crazy looking uh, through the fluid as EK intended when there's color. Now, if I go to just a standard white or uh, and which is really what I intended on doing because of the type of build it is, the look I was going for. If I just do a standard white, it doesn't look quite the same. It looks more like a dirty dishwasher, dirty dishwater. However, I think it's awesome now. So anyway, now that this is done, I hope you did like today's video. If you did, you know what to do. If you didn't, you know what else to do. I hope it's not that. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me that, as it really does help this channel out. And we will see you in the next one. Thanks. So, hey. Another level, another level, another level. We ain't never settle now. Nah. Level up, uh, watch me level up, uh, watch me level up, uh, watch me level up. Uh, another.